Welcome back to the Quantum Guide Show. Today in episode 157, I'm very happy to bring on a new guest, Gary May McGill. Gary Michael May McGill is an American actor, entertainer, singer-songwriter, filmmaker, comedian, producer, editor, activist, psychic medium, and his mission is to spread love into the universe. His YouTube channel is called Camp G May, and it is an original music video jukebox, an elaborate mixture of Gary Michael May and Tribe Sunshine. Gary Michael May McGill also hosts an open mic jam live stream, 7 p.m. to midnight PST every Saturday night. Everyone is welcome to play a tune on the open mic virtual stage or just hang out and make some friends. Camp g -May and Gary Michael also host live virtual festivals and concerts, and he is always looking for new artists to join and collaborate. Like, subscribe, and leave him a comment. To find out more about Gary and Camp g -May, the links are featured below in the description. Thank you for subscribing. Leave me a comment and smash that like button. Today, we will hear about some fascinating prof prophetic predictions for 2080. Welcome, Gary. Welcome to the Quantum Guide Show. How are you doing today? Thank you, Karen. I'm doing absolutely fantastic. It's absolute pleasure to be here. I, I've been really looking forward to it. I've been to your platform quite a bit. I love to hang out on Saturday nights and listen to all the artists and the, the great tunes. And it's just a great way to spend um, a Saturday night, but also the live chat. Awesome, awesome people in the live chat. So I really, really recommend the viewers and the listeners to come check you out on Saturday night. Well, I appreciate that. You know, we have a really good time on Saturday nights just if it wasn't for all the really cool musicians that come up and jam, and if it wasn't for all the really, really cool people that hang out and chat and watch is what makes the magic happen. But I'm glad to be a guest here. I guess we're going to be doing some predictions. We're going to talk about possibly what life's going to be like in 2080. Me and you probably won't be here, but <laughs> at least this video will be here, right? Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So they don't take we... it down, right? <laughs> <laughs> so for context, we're going to start a little bit with what history and present time, what's going on, because that's sort of setting the stage for the future. Yes. I mean, you know, of course, we have the past, we have the present and we have the future. So maybe first we can just kind of go take a look at the past and, and that'll kind of help us get to where we are now. And then we can talk about some predictions for 2080. Um you know, when I watch these videos of people, um, you know, from like the uh, 40s and 50s that were like predicting what life was going to be like in 2000, they were pretty far off. I mean, if you watch any of them, you know, they talk about these flying discs that you stand on. And um, it's interesting that um, a lot of them aren't that accurate. <laughs> Yeah. So what I find is, you know, for hundreds and hundreds of years, it's kind of like the same barbaric type of living on Earth, you know. Um, it wasn't until probably about 70 years ago when supposedly these UFOs crashed. And that's where they picked up like the integrated circuit board, fiber optics, mm -hmm. laser, the digital medium, the LED display, you know. So after going hundreds and hundreds of years, all of a sudden, the last 70 years, there's been a huge change in the planet, technology wise. So the interesting thing about that is, there's people that say that when they found all this stuff, they could have gave it to you all, boom, right here in one package. But what they did is they compartmentalized it and they started just giving you a little bit at a time. And then they gave it to certain companies that they can control so that it was under their wing 
for example, um, you know, the first thing they gave you was remember when everybody had a wristwatch and, yeah. you know, you wind your watch up, right? Remember those first ones that were like the red LED display? Everybody had to have one. You had to have one of these watches with the, it's not the hands anymore. It's digital, right? Everybody bought one. Everyone had one. And then a little bit later, boom, they give you, uh, I don't know if you had one, but it was like a little pocket organizer where you can keep people's phone numbers in there. Yeah, I think it was called a BlackBerry or something like that. Or is that right. before and that? It wasn't even like a phone. It was just to keep numbers in, you know. But as they slowly compartmentalized it, you know, it was a, a way to be able to just feed you a little bit of the technology just a little bit at a time. You know what I mean? Yeah, get us to spend lots and lots of money. And, uh, and then every couple of years, they come up with something better. And then nobody wants the old stuff anymore. Well, and that's the scary part, because if you knew exactly what they have now, you probably wouldn't be able to sleep at night. But like I said, they just give you a little bit at a time. First, it's dial up modem. Then it's this. Then it's that. Yeah. Then it's the flip phone. And then it's the phone with the caller ID in it. Or, you know, remember when uh, the caller ID came out? That's just another form of uh, compartmentalization pyramid Boom, boom, boom. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of crazy because this is technology just over the last 70 years that has transpired, like I said, and for hundreds and hundreds of years, that wasn't the case. It was no technology. So, yeah, that's absolutely true. In fact, if you showed up, you know, 300 or 400 years ago with a cell phone, they would have burned you as a witch real fast. Right, right, right. Yeah. It's it's crazy because, you know, you think about it like, is there anything in between us other than just the air? Yes, there is. There's a lot of metaphysical. There's energy and transference. You know, it started with radio waves and this waves. Now it's beta waves, alpha waves. Uh, Wi-Fi, you can't see it, but it's there. And it's actually going, traveling like crazy. And there's a lot of people that say that when they found uh, all this technology, a lot of it travels to the ionosphere. And what's so funny is cell phones and, and all this stuff, it all travels through the ionosphere. It goes up because you have the stratosphere, the lithosphere, you have all these different spheres. Well, the ionosphere is completely controlled by the same people. And that's why it doesn't matter who you are or what country you live in. If you have a cell phone, it travels and it is con controlled through the ionosphere. At least that what they say, you know, you got to remember too that, you know, a lot of times we talk about stuff it doesn't mean, hey, this is what I believe. It's more of like, well, this is what we're going to put up on the pedestal. And this is what we're going to talk about, you know, it, 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 objectively. Because there's people that say that with this technology came a little something in the late 60s. Uh, the Pentagon and a, a little organization called DARPA see funded a little something that we like to call now called the internet okay mm -hmm. so they control everything because it doesn't matter if you're facebook if you're twitter if whatever medium you are you're on the internet they control the internet so all the information that we get comes from the internet comes from either our phone the television you know so it's all coming from the same place. So they kind of uh, pick, uh, pick and choose, you know, what we see and what we don't see when it comes to the Internet. So I always found that really interesting. Um, because when they say World Wide Web, it's the same trip. It's everyone has an IP address. Everybody has, has a host. Everybody has a address on the Internet. So if they don't like you... We'll just kick you right out of the internet. <laughs> but anyway, um, but that kind of helps us get 
to where we are now, where it, it's really hard to make, uh, you know, an objective opinion on things because what I witness is we're constantly being controlled. And I think as we get into the future and we get into 2080, that's something that's going to keep continuing. Yeah. Control. Um, because it, like I said, if you look at the past and you look at what's going on and where it relates us today, you know, it's like when uh, the Patriot Act in 2001 passed, we lost um, a lot of stuff, man. Um, we lost a lot of our constitutional rights because of the Patriot Act. Yeah. Um, we lost due process of law. Okay. Before it was just like, hey, you got to go up in front of a judge between a certain amount of time. That's your constitutional right. Now, because of the interest of national security, it doesn't matter. I can put you in a cage and beat you for weeks and because of national interest. Um, we lost uh, illegal search and seizure. Mm -hmm. um, is that, is, I, Gary, is that tied into how it used to be? You were innocent. You were assumed innocent until proven guilty. It's now seems to me like you're guilty until you prove you're innocent. And even then, it may not even matter. Well, it, it's all because of the Patriot Act and all because you might be a terrorist. And just because of that justification, you lose these rights. Uh, illegal wiretapping. We lost We lost so many constitutional rights in 2001. Like I said, we lost two process of law. Uh, we lost illegal search and seizure. We lost illegal wiretapping. We lost your home is your castle. It doesn't matter. They can come if they think you're a terrorist. They can come kick your door in. OK, and they can uh, hold you as long as they want. They don't have to have a reason before. It was just like, hey, you have to have a reason. You have to have if 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 I don't give you my consent, you have to have me in front of a, a, a if I don't waive my rights, you got to have me in front of a judge within 48 hours. Mm -hmm. It's all completely gone now. More control because we're talking about how the future is going to be controlled more and more and more. So. You look at that and you're like, wow, okay, interesting. And then you come to 2020, you know, with World War III or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and we lose even more. We lose freedom of speech, which is absolutely disgusting because, um, you know, look, no one uh, is going to advocate hate speech or something along those lines. That's, I'm with you for banning stuff like that. But when you just um, take down uh, doctors and people and activists and people that are just bringing up good subjects that should be talked about, when you're banning that, that's when it becomes a problem. Mm -hmm. And here's the biggest one. Not only did we lose freedom of speech, but, and, and we also lost our doctor-patient in the past, it was like my medical history is my business. Yes. Not yours. It's between me and my doctor. And you have, I'm protected by the constitution by that. Now it's like, oh, did you get the MRI synthetic injection? I want to know. It's like, well, it's none of your business. You know what I mean? So all that tells me is that 2001, you lose some bunch of constitutional uh, right. 2020, lose a bunch more. What does that tell you? 2040 is coming. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's like, I mean, we're, I'm in Canada. It's a little different, but it's the same stuff going on. Um, they're putting people in jail, uh, denying them bail without even charging them. They're in there for years, uh, political prisoners in their own country. Um, they're making it right now so that um, if we say something actually in Canada, if they suspect that you are going to commit a hate crime or do hate speech in the future, they can put you in jail right now. They can do that here in Canada. So I'll tell you what it feels like from my perspective is we're basically being treated like cattle. What do you do to cattle? You keep them, you keep them confined, you keep them restricted, you make sure they get all their shots. 
And, you know, that's what it feels like to me. And it's not a good feeling, not at all, especially for those of us that are a bit older. I'm 68 years old now. So I know what freedom or relative freedom felt like. And yep. uh, to see what's going on today is uh, kind of a little bit unbelievable, but got to, got to, got to deal with it. Aaron, I mean, I've been on the planet for over 60 years and I've seen a lot come and go. I've seen this whole, you know, I live out in uh, uh, a little place that I like to call the devil's playground, Silicon Valley. And um, I got to tell you, it's pretty crazy because I was here. I was the kid running around shooting salt rock guns, driving a uh, shooting BB guns and driving a little mini bike through orchards and picking cherries and apricots. And, uh, you know, in the late sixties, early seventies, and then to see IBM come in in like 72 and on and on and on. And then boom, the eighties hit. And it's just a completely different place. Uh, it, it is definitely Silicon Valley. And the funny thing about it is they basically had, uh, when you lived in this valley uh, before Silicon Valley, you had two options. You had the Del Monte plant was uh, where they canned uh, foods. because Fruits and vegetables, yeah. Beautiful land for growing food. And then uh, the Ford plant. Those were like your two options, you know what I mean? So anybody that was just like, uh, uh, anybody else just worked like in the restaurant industry or, you know, stuff like that. And that's been completely wiped out now because um, it's like $2,000 for a closet, to rent a closet now. Mm. <laughs> anyway, you know, we're talking about the future and we're talking about what it holds. And there's definitely this reoccurring theme of control, you know? and losing freedoms and i think it's going to be more of like a remember when remember when we used to uh and this is like maybe you know around 2080 there's going to be no more remember when we used to put the sticker on our license plate you know because now it's evolved into it's just starting to happen everywhere you're not going to put it on the back of your license plate anymore you're going to put it on the inside the front of your windshield because it's now not going to be just a sticker for the cops to see it's going to be a computer chip that you put in there and once again that's compartmentalized because now as you drive under stuff and you drive under these little things that they have everywhere it just picks it up yeah but everybody will adhere to it everyone will do it because it basically says when you get a driver's license that it's not a right, it's a privilege. And one time when I went to get my license renewed, I'm reading all this flight and print, because you know, you gotta wait forever, right? And I'm reading it all, and down at the bottom it says that I, by signing this, you consent to them taking your blood, okay? What, what? Yes, and what I did is I put a line through it and I said, notwithstanding, I do not adhere to that. Thought I'd get away with it, right? And I turned in my paperwork and she goes, they called the manager over. They had a big problem with it and I had to do it all over and I couldn't cross that out. Isn't that crazy? So we're going to fall into this, you know, remember when game definitely You know, especially when it comes to like purchasing goods, because we all know now ever since World War Three, that's what I like to call it right around 2020. It's a um, psychological warfare. Oh, yeah. I mean, there are. And at the time, it was psychological because we hadn't been in any really wars for first time in 72 years. But now all of a sudden there are tanks and bombs. But in the beginning, there were no it was all completely psychological yeah uh, but getting back to the you know putting the chip in your car by 2080 all cars will be electric all cars will already come pre-chipped so you don't have to be the guy putting it in there mm -hmm. and then another sense of control because what ends up happening is we, they can monitor through the dmv every single car and what it's doing and where it's at and what it's doing so there's no robbing banks there's no doing 
getting away with anything because they just turn the computer chip off. It just turns your car off. Yeah. Going anywhere. They can see anywhere where you go. They can track everything, tracking control. Me and you, we just jump in the 57 Chevy, put some gasoline in there, and boom, we drive wherever we want. Mm -hmm. Well, in 2080, that's not going to be the case. No. At all. No. We control. So remember when, <laughs> you know, and another one will be, remember when we used to go to the store and buy stuff? That'll be completely a blue, gone. I mean, you're never, ever going to get rid of it 100%. There's always going to be the underground, the shady part of town, because there's always going to be that little convenience store that's going to convert the money. And as they slowly get all the money, that'll finally 100% go away. But until then... Yeah, it'll all be digital. It, it'll all be 100% digital because just another way of tracking. And what's so funny is, you know, you, you drive around, uh, especially in the beginning of uh, World War III, and you see these signs at Starbucks and the store and all these places are all, um, sorry, coin shortage. Have you seen any of that coin shortage? Yeah, business? places that are saying we don't even take cash. Because they say, they said that the cash in Canada, they said cash carries germs. Right, but but um, the, the Amazon delivery package, which is cardboard, doesn't, is the same thing as paper money. Yeah, I know, I know. Can, it, it's none of it makes any more. sense. And that's part of the problem is the whole crazy making element, the whole crazy making element that takes us off of being grounded, being centered and being spiritually connected because yeah. it's crazy making. It's all crazy making. That's part of it, Karen. That's part of the whole objective is divide and conquer fear mm -hmm. brain uh, strip you away from your spirituality uh make everybody to hit everybody against each other and you know like i said this is just theory you know we're just putting up on the pedestal it's just things that we notice it's like you can't tell me that you know that you want to eliminate paper money because of it carrying stuff you can't tell me that when um, you're allowing uh, most people that are uh, homeless do DoorDash. During World War III, I had 10 friends that lived in their car and delivered DoorDash. Mm -hmm. Okay, They'd wake up and pee in a cup and then go pick up someone's food. And, and, but they allow that to happen. They allow it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It, it it and then they allow um all these packages to be delivered the mail system it's contradicting but getting back to the coin shortage you know i used to always love to go to reno and get a couple rolls of nickels and play the slots you know and have some fun and release well you know now that all the casinos in the entire world are now converted over to um digital I didn't know that. Yes, they're all, none of them take coins anymore, at least for like the last 20 years. Hmm. So there now, you just put the paper money in and it's even gotten more sinister where you just put your bank card in now. And that gives you, you just play the credits right from your bank card. Sickening. But the point is, you can't tell me there's a coin shortage when... Every casino on the planet is not using their coins anymore. Where are all those coins and how could there be a shortage? <laughs> right? I mean, it's crazy. I don't know if it's true, but I heard that, you know, there's, there is an accounting when it comes to money, what goes where and how much there is. But when they switch to coins, there's no accounting. There's no accountability. And so, like in Canada, they switched from a $1 bill to a loonie, which was a coin. And they switched $2 mm -hmm. to toonies, which is a coin. And then there was no more accountability for millions and millions of dollars that was produced then in coins. 
And you got, it makes you kind of wonder, gee, I wonder, I wonder where all the money went. And where all the coins went. Look, Atlantic City, Reno, Rio de Janeiro, all these uh, casinos aren't using coins anymore. So those coins had to go somewhere, whether they were destroyed. But like I said, getting back to, you know, into the future, to me, it's all about detachment. It's all about control. It's all about fear mongering, um, especially the detachment, because, you know, when we grew up, you know, you know, the old buzz, you know, you sat around, you listened to records, you look forward to hanging out with your friends and social interaction on a Friday, Saturday night. You got dressed, getting ready. Everybody's going to sit around, have a couple drinks, talk, conversate. It was exciting. Well, now we're kind of detached from that. Now it's like, well, I'm just going to be over here in the corner on my little piece of plastic, right? When uh, my nieces and nephews come over to visit, that's not much of a visit because everybody's sitting around on their device. Yeah. And you know what I call it? I call it a nipple. So look, you know, at, you're absolutely right. And I, I really noticed it even, even before about five years ago, it wasn't the way it is now. The way it is now, you can't visit with anybody because they're glued to their phones. My grown children, they're on their phone and they kind of go, mm -hmm, mm hmm, but you know, they didn't hear a word you said. So we're, you're right. We're detached. We have no more um, <clears throat> that bond between us. I mean, I'm sure it's still there, but not, not communication wise. And people are not, um, they're not, um, they're also losing their ability to be empathetic. Yes. And to be patient. And to all those virtuous things that take practice are not happening. And so we're ending up with a whole generation of young people who they don't even know how to do manners and stuff like that because they're just on their phone all the time. It's like it's for, for me at being my age, it's seriously like being sunk into a futuristic dystopian future sci fi movie. Absolutely. It's absolutely it's. It's absolutely mind-boggling because of the detachment and because of the um, um, desensitized. You know, when when I was in the sixth grade, we would run over, you know, at playground. We'd run over underneath the bleachers and we'd hold our lips together. <laughs> you know, and time it, three minutes of just holding your lips together. You know, and you just got an euphor euphoria out of that. It was just like, oh, my God, I did that with Cindy, you know. <laughs> and it was so innocent, you know, because we weren't detached. We weren't massively controlled. We weren't desensitized. Now, I don't even want to tell you what sixth graders are. Well, I know in Canada, I, I, I'm sorry, I keep throwing out Canada, but um, they're there actually there's a huge outrage because children in grade in grade <clears throat> let me see 10 year old children are being sent home with wooden phalluses condoms and books on how to do um how to do um gay sex yeah it's and they're know, not and the parents don't even know about it, it it's a little too <laughs> much information too early but you know i think you know, just to move on a little bit from that, I think the point we were that I was just trying to make is that, you know, the detachment, the control, the, the, the you know, as humans, you know, before all this technology over the last 70 years, you know, you really strive for human connection and yeah. human touch and falling in love with someone. Well, that's slowly just getting taken away because people now just you know, are desensitizing themselves with pornography and different stuff like that. So they don't need anybody. All they need is their little phone nipple, you know, to just go off and it serves all their purposes for them. It gives them uh, dopamine. It gives them, uh, 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 they can put a filter on their face and think that they look better than they do. I mean, all these yeah. things. Um, and it's all phony. It's all fake. None of it, none of it, none of it's real. Exactly. And that kind of brings us to where we're at. You know, I think what happens is 
you know, we talk about division. I think one of the ways they do it is by labeling things. Mm -hmm. Female, black, white, French, Italian, Irish. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. But my point is when you really, really look at it, if we all just acknowledge that we're all just humans, it really takes away a lot of that because then there's no division. Me and you are exactly the same because we're both human. Mm -hmm. But the problem is they're creating, at least I think, a new form of human. You know, you heard of this uh, Neuralink? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Successfully computer chipped the first human brain so the, with the computer chip in there it's like you turn on and off the computer just by thinking about it turn on the computer you know you just think it and the computer turns on okay so now if you really don't think that there's something in between us that you can't see it's there because if i can turn on something just by thinking it and those waves are there they're doing something they're turning it on and it's crazy to think about there's uh i heard that there is downtown texas that a lot of the workforce a lot of those there's a, a i think it's about 10 or twenty thousand people that work all young in their 20s they all are computer chipped with opening the door signing in bank account everything because that chip will have everything it'll have your bank account your medical records and that's one of the reasons why they need to take away these constitutional rights especially the ones that we lost with the freedom of speech and the doctor patient confidentiality is because we need to have all that on the chip we need to have your medical record we need to know everything about you on that chip and I truly believe that by 2080, remember when <laughs> we the nurses used to just put the armband on the child when it was born? Well, we don't want them getting mixed up. So uh, I think by 2080, all newborns in the world will be computer chipped. Hi, guys. Break time for a short message. YouTube will not monetize me, so if you enjoy my content and want to support my efforts, help me to cover my expenses by visiting my shop to buy yourself a beautiful Orgon generator. Zendome's Organite are my unique brand, and they are ethically sourced, handmade, and double-charged for maximum effect. They are only available through my website, www.karenholtonhealthcoach.com. Com. Many people are finding comfort with Zendome's organ generators, commonly called Organite. They are a simple compound which balance ambient energy by converting negative energy and EMF into positive healing energy with many easily confirmed health benefits. They are a simple compound with alchemic and energetic properties. These devices function as self-driven, continuously operating highly efficient negative to positive energy transmutation factories. They help diminish the harmful effects of electromagnetic frequency radiation by attracting and converting negative energies, retuning them into new and more healthful sound and light wave patterns, and they help to purify the atmosphere and accelerate plant growth they also help stimulate positive mood and are a natural remedy for poor sleep patterns. When Organite is within range of any corded or wireless electronic device, it will efficiently and continuously transform that energy into Orgone as it is being transmitted. This essentially creates Orgone energy transmitters out of any and all emitters of harmful negative energy. You can use these devices for focusing the mind, healing, meditation, and for spiritual growth. Zendome's Organite are my unique brand of organ generators, and they are only available through my website. Don't be fooled by imitations. 
check out my website to see my latest selection at www.karenholtonhealthcoach.com. That's K-A-R-E-N-H-O-L-T-O-N healthcoach.com. Check them out today. Now, let's get back to the show. You have a chip put in them right from the get-go. Mm-hmm. You'd be able to just scan them like a piece of, you know, something at the store. Bleep. Yeah. And it'll tell you everything. It'll have their social security number. It'll have their medical history. It'll have their DNA. But I think the sickest thing is we're going to get into, by 2080, I think there will be a crossbreed type human I think that between prosthetics, you know, you hear the story about the guy that gets his feet cut off from the knees. And next thing you know, he's like a military paratrooper. He's got these robotic legs put on him. They're dropping him out of a helicopter. He's running. He's like bionic now. He's got prosthetics. I think between the prosthetics the computer chipping and the uh, the gene manipulation, it's going to get pretty scary. What are your thoughts on that? Well, it sounds to me a lot like the Borg, the whole Borg. Um, uh, what's that from? That's from Star Trek, Star Trek series, Next Generation. Yeah. Where, um, where they're not even allowed independent thought. They're part of a hive mind. They're all... Um, part organic and part mechanical. And um, there's no quality of life, zero quality of life. And I think, I think too, that um, we're, you know, we're being, we're being manipulated to serve masters. And, and the thing is, is that because of all the perceived differences, people aren't focusing on who are the masters, what are the masters in, in my perspective, they are sociopaths, they're psychopaths. They, have, they don't have the ability to empathize, obviously, or they wouldn't be doing what they're doing. But along with that deficiency comes an inability to be creative, to think in creative terms, in spiritual terms. I don't think they even know how to love. And somehow they've orchestrated things to have the power to be able to manipulate humanity. And I think, seriously, um, it uh, people need to wake up. I think that they need to wake up. I don't know if we can change everything and fix this, but <clears throat> hell, I, I'll die trying, you know? I have to agree with you. I mean, it actually gets really scary with the things that are going on and you know, I heard this one um, uh, theory that they were building, they, they don't want people living off in the boondocks. So that's why, have you heard of fracking? Oh, yes. We, we have fracking here in Alberta where I live. Right. Because they don't want people, you know, uh, in these uh, communes and spiritual people just going off and living their lives. They want to. They're going to, uh, by three, uh, 2100, there's going to be a rail system that goes from New York to LA and it'll go through all about seven. It'll stop at about seven different major cities along the way, high speed rail system. Okay. And they want to force everyone out of the boondocks and into these areas for the high speed, uh, rail system. Uh, because of po population control, you mm -hmm. know, because right? then that way you can keep an eye on everyone. Everyone can be videotaped. Everyone will be chipped. Yep. You don't want anybody running around out in the woods, which when you think about it, that's where we get our spirituality. That's where we get our soulless. That's where we get centered. That's where we, you know, we, we, you, you feel so good when you're connected with nature. Oh, Yes. So detaching people from that is definitely, I think, one of the agendas. Um, and, you know, I don't want to sit here and, like, you know, point fingers at anyone or anything like that. But you see the slow control over time. Boom, boom, boom. Um, you know, for example, 
you know, 50 years ago, maybe 60 years ago, there was maybe about a hundred different multimedia organizations, real news organizations that um, you couldn't call yourself news unless you were uh, certified and had like a third party member looking over it to make sure that everything you're doing now, all the news is uh, complete WWF wrestling. It's complete uh, 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 sensationalism. Sensationalism. There's yeah, no. They're all. They're all speaking off the same script. They're all reading the same script. And there's no journalism. Right, and it's like you get this ping pong. You go over to the red channel, and it's uh, oh, the blue sucks. And you go over to the blue channel, and it's all red sucks. You know, and what's so funny is both wings are attached to the same bird same bird yes yes absolutely it, it doesn't matter you know one thing that really gets me is that we're getting served this same um we're getting this, this same menu are we going to go through this again really these same two puppets we're going to get dragged through the mud with these same two i mean cuz me i don't care if it's bugs bunny Versus Kermit the Frog. It doesn't matter which one wins. The same agenda is going to unfold. The same people that are running the show are going to run the show. You know? Um, so, to me, it, these people are really, really hard uh, to defeat because they'll take you out. They can even take me and you out just because of what we're talking about. Because it threatens them. But... The only thing we have on our side is that we're in our 60s. So they're like, oh, we'll just give them another 10 years. They'll be yeah. dead. You know, why waste our bullets, you know? Yeah, but you and I are both proactive with our health. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see about that. <laughs> right. But, you know, I think by 2080, the world will be controlled a lot more. I think that... Um, like I said, things are really going to be changed and we'll see, we'll see what happens because I truly believe that we're in the wild, wild West right now when it comes to live streaming. And I think we're able to get away with a lot more than people are going to be able to get away with in 2080. I think they're going to look back at us and say, Hey, these guys were the pioneers. These guys were the wild West. They were the gunslingers. They were the ones the last ones to really talk about things that you can't talk about now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're uh, me, especially I'm not here to try to, like I said, point fingers at any organizations or, you know, drop names or anything. I just, like I said, I've been on the planet for a long time. I've seen a lot. I've been through a lot and it, I noticed that, there's a reoccurring pattern and that's control loss of rights you know um fear mongering detachment yeah and you know someday i want to be able to uh do the complete opposite of all that i want to be able to have a place where people can come and live like a free lifestyle uh, and be free again and be detached from this um, UFO that crashed 70 years ago. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I was going to ask you, do you believe in a depopulation agenda? And if you do, where do you see that taking us in uh, towards 2080? With the, the whole depopulation thing, I mean, look, when you go watch videos on the uh, uh World Economic Forum, these people that have all the money that are actually making all the most decisions for us, they blatantly say, yes, they're trying to do that. And I think that one way to do that is kind of how they're doing it. I shouldn't say this, but anyway, I think what it is is through these experimental synthetic injections, what's going to happen is when babies are born and chipped by 2080, they'll also be injected with a synthetic injection that will make them sterile. 
Mm-hmm. And what will happen is you now apply to have a children through the government. And then if they kind of kind of like adoption, if they allow it, you come in and you'll get an injection that'll reverse that blocker. Mm-hmm. And then you'll be able to have children now. So if you have the right genetics, the right income, the right compliance attitude, all, all of those things, you know, it's very similar to the digital money. They can shut that off too anytime they want. And think about it. You know, some people think, oh, well, it would be more convenient, but it means you don't have a few bucks to give the babysitter. You don't have some money to give to the homeless. You don't have, you know, like there is um, a small underground economy that depends on cash that we're going to lose and people aren't going to realize, you know, just even five bucks to the girl guides for bringing you some cookies once a year. All of that will be gone. It's and the worst. So, so um, I see it as being very, very similar. And um, I also, uh, not to go off topic too much, but I also think that for a lot of people, it's like death by a thousand cuts. So it may not be any one thing that takes out the population, but it might be eating this kind of fast food along with not taking care of ourselves in another way, along with too much sugar, not enough exercise. You know what I mean? Death by a thousand cuts. So that you so that there's what they call plausible deniability. Yes. And they can't say sue this corporation or that company because it's 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 by participating in like a lethal um concoction of Absolutely. lifestyle choices. And and I, I try to tell people about that, but boy, the last thing people want to hear is. Uh, you know, that you need to be careful what you eat, you know? Well, especially with this, you know, back in the early 70s, we called it scratch and sniff, okay? <laughs> you scratch the piece of paper, oh, it smells like a banana, you scratch it. <laughs> yeah. Well, now all that stuff, uh, red dye six, red dye five, blue dye, uh, artificial flavors, uh, artificially sweetened, um, let me tell you something. There is no blueberry flavor, okay? You want blueberry flavor, you go buy some blueberries and <laughs> eat berries. The best thing that's ever happened to you. Anything that is injected with any type of flavoring like that, even when you see the water, they try to label it where, hey, look how popular, uh, good this water is, antioxidants. It's mineral spring water, blueberry flavor. It's like, well, just by putting that chemical in there, you've completely ruined it. And like you said, it's allowing people to hang themselves as far as population control. But I want to get back real quick to what you said about the paper money. And um, one of the biggest reasons for eliminating it, I think, is for control and segregation. Okay. In other words, you go to this really seedy part of town, a lot of undesirables, you know, for whatever reason. Well, all their cards work there. When they come over and they try to use it in Beverly Hills, it's been declined. None of their cards work there. They can't buy anything. Oh, interesting. See what I'm saying? So what happens is your stuff only works over there. Go over there. You know, do do they have uh, what they call the 15-minute cities happening in the United States? In Canada, they do. The province I live in is in Alberta. And I live in Red Deer, which is between Edmonton and Calgary. Edmonton and Calgary are both signed up for the 15-minute cities, which means each city is divided into zones that you can walk from one end to the other within 15 minutes. And you're supposed to stay within that zone. Now, what you've just said about how the card will work here and it won't work there, that's another way to keep you in your zone because your card will only work in that zone. And if you don't have cash, you're screwed. The same with electric vehicles. You know, um, if I want to go visit my daughter and my grandchildren on the on the West Coast, you know, I have to drive through miles and miles and miles of mountains where there's nothing. There's nothing. There's no gas stations, no restaurants, nothing. 
Well, an electric vehicle is never going to get you there. Again, keeping you within a small area. What do you say about all that, Gary? You, and you don't want to drive out there because you're not going to be able to charge your car to get back. And yep. once again, it's keeping everyone all in the populated areas, keeping people um, uh, desensitized, detached. And then not only that, once they all are in the same area, um, they'll easily turn on each other. They don't need each other. They uh, uh, have this device that just, like you said, it's almost like you're in some bizarre movie where, and, and that's another thing too, you got to remember whenever slowly over the last 40 years, what they've done is whenever people start to prophesize about this stuff or bring it to light mm -hmm. as being reality, they'll make fun of it and they'll, they'll, they'll bring up that issue in their movies in their programming so funny because my uh my granny was old school you know she was uh born a long long time ago and she used to always say your program is on do you want to watch your program and if you think about it it's programming they're yep. programming you like i can't even go to the movies anymore at all because to me it's all just a giant infomercial yeah with ESI and digital, I, I I don't want to see any of that digital. It's all fakery. You know, the movies that they made in the 40s and 50s, those were real movies because they were acting and they were, there's no uh, uh, computer generated images and they weren't relying on all that. Like uh, I went and saw Aquaman with my nephew and I had to, I walked out and went, had some, took a walk around the mall until it was over and went back. I just couldn't even watch it. It was just disgusting, you know? So I think that um, these uh, these programs help program the agenda and people don't even realize it. They're just and, like, oh yeah. But now from our perspective, you look back, like there was a movie called Soylent Green. There was a uh, I don't know if it came from a book, but there was a book and then it was a movie, 1984. Then, there, you know what I mean? Fahrenheit 500. All this stuff has come true in our day. All of it, you know, yeah. and it's 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 not funny. Like, but most people don't even notice it because they're caught up with the screen. They're caught up on the screen. Exactly. And that is their reality. That becomes yeah. their reality. Well, the point to that I think I was trying to get across is that what they do is they mock it so that if someone, if I bring something up, they can say, Oh, you've been watching too many movies. Yeah. You talk exactly. about org human person that's going to uh, be created. Oh, you've been watching too much Star Trek. So they, that's why they allow certain things so that later they can use it against you as uh that you're just delusional that you've been watching too many movies so that way it doesn't give that subject any more validity See yeah. there's a whole system of gaslighting i don't know if the viewers and the listeners are familiar with this term it comes from a movie that came out i think in the 1940s where this guy tried to convince his wife that she was crazy by altering the illumination in the lamps by turning the gas up and down. It's called gaslighting. And it's uh -huh. happening all the time now. We're being gaslit. We're being told, no, no, you're imagining it. Oh, it's right. if you watch too much television or you or you right. watch too many, read too many of those crazy books, or you know, it's just constantly being gaslit. And again, it knocks us off our center so we're not grounded. So unless we're purposely putting our phone down and taking a walk into the woods and reconnecting to the real real, yeah, we're lost. And I can't stress that enough. Um, I can't stress that enough. Where I live, it's very cold. Uh, it's starting to melt, but it's still very cold, sub-zero weather. But very soon, it'll start to thaw, and I can't wait to get back into the woods 
And yes. I get to know the trees and the birds. And, you know, the birds in my backyard, they all have their own social system and their own communication. And some of them are little brats and some of them are really sweet. And you see this whole pageantry going on in the real, real world, you know, amongst the dandelions and the grass. I can't imagine losing that. There'd be no quality of life without that. And yet many people have already lost it. I don't know. Am I rambling, Gary? Oh, so wonderful that you just brought that up, Karen, because to tie everything together at the end, the one thing that defeats this entire agenda is love. Love defeats it all. And that's when you go out into nature, you know, that's why you feel so good is because you're connected to the planet. You feel the energy. You feel the love. And that's something that they, for some reason, like you said, there's this, it's almost like they have a, a religious agenda to fulfill of like some type doomsday scenario or something when really it should just be the opposite. We all should just be sharing and loving each other and providing for each other and making the world a better place. And that's one of the reasons why, while I'm still on the planet, I will continuously never stop spreading love into the universe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's so important. I That ties in closely with my agenda, which is to become the change that I want to see in the world, not give in and not give up. Just keep working on myself to be kinder, more loving, more giving, but to take good care of myself too. You know, I don't put up with bullshit either. Now I'm wondering, we're getting, we're not really out of time yet, but Gary, I don't want to cut you off. I want to let you finish with the prophetic stuff, but then can we segue into Camp GMA? Because that's part of your vision and it's also tied in with your YouTube channel. Absolutely. You know, I'm getting ready uh, up in the Pacific Northwest. I'm getting ready to create um, an invite only um, compound, you might call it. Uh, called Camp G May, where musicians and artists and free thinkers and uh, people can come and hang out for a week and just chill with nature and music and artistry. And um, it'll all be documented. So I'm in the process of building uh, that amusement park up north. Uh, it's going to take a few more years. So as every Saturday night, I have a um, open mic uh, where People can come up and jam, and I'm really, really lucky because people have been contributing to Camp GMA, and all the funds that I collect go towards uh, that um, amusement part, uh, uh, adult amusement part, and so, and then every, um, you know, maybe every month or two, I hold a virtual concert where all... Um, the people that want to come up, we hold like these virtual concerts and we're going to be doing that for the next couple of years. Um, and we're just going to try to spread love into the universe through music. Mm -hmm. We're going to try to collect as much money as we can to help build Camp G May. And then one day, hopefully we'll see you up there. Um, uh, and that's pretty much it. That's, you know, uh, my, uh, agenda is um, building a place to harmonize and spread love into the universe, point blank. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Now, the next uh, music festival or concert is what, April 6th? What do you call it again? Six. We're, well, we're calling it Funk Fest, and it's a funk little bit fest. funk. It's soul, rhythm and blues, rock and roll, all with a little bit of a funky twist. Um, uh, one of the, uh, uh, really cool, cool humans that come in, we got to call everybody human that come over to my show. <laughs> His name's Kurt Kasprick and Kurt, yeah, always around all the different music channels, supporting everyone, him and his wife, Justine, they're really cool yeah. people. But I never really had seen him, you know, and he never turns his camera on. He never comes up on anybody's show. So one day um, I was just 
pop in like at one in the morning, just goofing around. And he comes in and, I, and he starts talking about, hey, you should do Funk Fest. Mm -hmm. I said, see what, Kurt? You come up right now and you turn on your camera and you're going to co-host Funk Fest with me. And sure enough, he comes up and he turns on his camera and he's just this beautiful human being. He's got this big beard. Yeah. And he, uh, we laugh and we have a good time. So he's going to be co-hosting it with me. So we're going to have hundreds of open mics and hundreds of virtual concerts over the next couple of years. And then hopefully one day that will turn into actual live concerts up north with all these mm -hmm. people. In Even Camp G May. At Camp G May. So Fantastic. We'll, so we'll see what happens. And then who knows, maybe they'll come uh, uh, shut me down, you know, Waco style. <laughs> the only well, thing is, how many guns? So it'll be like, you're going to have to come. Uh, uh, we're armed with guitars and kazoos. Yeah. Wonderful. So every Saturday night at what Seven. time uh, Pacific? Seven Pacific. Seven Pacific is um, Camp GMA, where pe folks can just come and hang out in the live chat, meet some really cool people, listen to some amazing music, all different kinds. Um, right. Some of it's highly synthesized, like empirism. His is highly synthesized, yeah. right down to people that just strum away on a bass, like Wes from uh, Rich New Design. It's just yeah. a great community. I really recommend it. And then April 6th, you can um, participate in the festival. It starts at 4.20 Pacific time. Yes, and Karen, I'm always looking for new artists and people to come up and join the festivals. The, the more the merrier. I'd love to start at 10 in the morning and go till 10 at night and do 50 artists. Um, and the thing is, at Camp G May, we welcome everyone. It, you... Even if you're if you're a, a karaoke, if you're just a poet, it, it whatever you know, whatever your expression and art is, um, the only thing is, um, we have to make sure that people's audio is good. Mm -hmm. Is and so, I am willing to have private with anyone that wants to get in the game. We have a private. I tell you what to get. We polish uh, your audio up because. Your audio has to be good. I don't care if, you know, uh, Paul McCartney wants to come up on his phone. Sorry, Paul. <laughs> you got to have good audio. Oh, you can't come up. Oh, Fair enough. Fair enough. Anyway, like I said, I'm here. If anybody wants, you just email me. We have a private. We go through the motions. We see uh, what you have and what you need and what we need to do to get you in the game because to me, that's what's spreading the love is the more the merrier. Yeah. The more we can and it's it's a it's it's tough because I was the same way a couple of years ago. You know, when you play live, it's a completely different animal than coming out here in the internet and playing. Mm -hmm. You know, you only need like about, you know, a, room minimum requirements to get in the game so if i can help someone get in the game and then they can come up and hang out and help spread love hey um, that makes me a happy camper wonderful yeah i really encourage everybody to check you out now the links will be in the description below i'm going to put your youtube link in there as well really recommend you subscribe and come hang out i'll be there on saturday night and uh, I, I just love it. I just love it. It really adds to my life. Now, I want to just get back to our uh, subject. We we only have a few minutes left, Gary. I was wondering, do you have advice for people who are afraid, afraid of the future, afraid of what they're seeing now, afraid of the future? Do you have any words of wisdom, any encouragement, um, or anything you want to say just to wrap that up? Well, I mean, you know, first off, obviously, we've all made it this far. So we're going to make it the rest of the way. Um, you know, I wouldn't, to me, you know, stress, anxiety, worry, to me, that's all just a frame of mind. I mean, the, the, the head hits the pillow every night. So it's going to continue to hit the pillow every night. So I think 
just opening your heart to love, like I said, is what cures all those ailments. Mm -hmm. Truly, truly just feel the energy. It just alleviates stress, anxiety, panic, fear. Mm -hmm. You've made it this far. You will make it the rest of the way. I guarantee that. Oh, that's that's terrific. I also recommend hugging your pets. I get a I, I get a great amount of uh, love. Well, sometimes not so much from one of them, but I have two cats and um, oh, they just keep me such wonderful company and they're so warm and chubby and furry. I just love them to bits. And then um, also getting outside and just reconnect, leave the phone at home and go for a walk and just yeah. discover your your you know your greater reality well it's um, been a real a real pleasure uh gary having you on the show i loved it i hope to have you on again in the future and i wish you every success with camp gma and um, i will also want to thank the listeners and the viewers thank you so much for joining us on the quantum guide show and i guess that's it for today and we'll see you next week bye bye everybody Thank you for joining me for the Quantum Guide Show. Become the change that you wish to see in the world. Subscribe to my YouTube and other channels at Karen Holton TV. Click the like button, leave me a comment, and share this podcast with your friends. Check out my website at www.KarenHoltonHealthCoach.com to see my free resources and amazing products and services. All the links will be in the description below. As part of the Forbidden Knowledge Network, you will find the Quantum Guide Show with Karen Holton and also the Aliens and Angels podcast on all audio platforms. Until next time, keep up the good work.